What's growing on, gardeners? It's Tuesday, February 27th, and spring is so close I can taste it here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina. On today's video, I'm going to share with all of you 25 different crops that you can plant in March right now for the best vegetable garden you have ever grown. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the bell to receive new video notifications and check out our Amazon store and Spreadshop links in the video description for everything I use in my garden and awesome custom designed apparel and other gear. Your support is greatly appreciated. Veggies numbers one through seven that you can start right now are the cucurbit family and that includes crops like cucumbers, squash like butternut, spaghetti or acorn, zucchini, pumpkins, gourds, watermelons, and other melons like cantaloupe, honeydew, and kajari melons. Now, these are just examples, and some of you may take issue with the way I laid them out. You may be saying, zucchini is technically a squash. Well, a zucchini is really nothing like a butternut squash, and a watermelon is really nothing like a cantaloupe, but cantaloupe and honeydew are pretty similar. Acorn squash and butternut squash are pretty similar. I tried to lump them together with what made the most sense, so go a little easy on me. Don't fall into the trap when you start your cucurbit seeds. Here where I live, I start my tomato and pepper seeds the very first week of February. So they've been growing for quite some time, but my cucurbits, I don't start until the middle of March. And that is for two distinct reasons. Number one, your cucurbits germinate in no time and they form transplants in no time. Whereas a tomato or pepper plant can take up to two weeks to germinate and another six to eight weeks to grow into mature transplants, your cucurbits usually germinate in three to five days, and then from there, they're ready to go out in your garden in only three weeks. Second, your tomatoes and peppers are subtropical plants that can tolerate cool nights in the low 40s and upper 30s as long as they don't get hit by frost and it warms up during the day and they recover. Your cucurbits, on the other hand, are very tropical. They don't like it when the nights drop below 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So whereas I bring my tomatoes and peppers out into my garden immediately after the last chance of frost, I don't plant my cucurbits out until about three weeks after because I want it to get nice and regularly warm at night. So don't fall into the trap and start your cucumbers, squash, and watermelon at the same time that you start your tomatoes and peppers. If you do, your cucurbits will be ready way too early and you won't have anywhere to place your plants. For more detail on growing cucurbits from seed, I will drop a link down in the video description that tells you everything you need to know. Crops eight and nine are potatoes and sweet potatoes, but despite the name, they are actually in different families. Your potatoes are a nightshade like tomatoes, peppers, and eggplant, whereas your sweet potatoes are in the morning glory family. They are actually the tuberous root of a morning glory plant. But despite the fact that they are not in the same family, you should start your potatoes and sweet potatoes both at the same time because they both take a while to get going. For example, your potatoes, you actually plant them directly after they begin sprouting. So this is a bag of organic potatoes that I bought from the grocery store and they are developing sprouts all over them. Once you start seeing sprouts, that means you can plant them. Now, while a potato is not tolerant of frost, frost will kill it. Because we bury them about six inches underground, by the time the eyes sprout underground and then the potatoes take root and they make green foliage and it breaks through the surface, several weeks have passed. So for that reason, you actually want to plant your potatoes about three weeks before your last frost date. That will give them time to get going and begin sprouting underground. Then by the time they actually break through the soil, your last chance of frost has passed. So I'm going to be planting my potatoes very soon in early March. Your sweet potatoes, on the other hand, grow completely differently. What you want to do with a sweet potato is you want to place it in moist potting mix and then keep it in a high humidity area and keep it nice and warm. And the potato will start rooting into the mix and then start sprouting vines. Those vines at the nodes will break off into slips and you actually snap those slips and you plant them directly into ground. Now, while your white potatoes, they can be planted when it's still pretty cool out, you don't want to plant your sweet potatoes outside until it's sufficiently warm at night, not until the nights at least hit 50 degrees Fahrenheit, because these are super tropical. They don't like any temperatures below 50. So because of that, it usually takes anywhere from about six to eight weeks for your sweet potatoes to root and start producing slips. This plant right here is actually a rooted Okinawan sweet potato that I overwintered from last year, and it's still producing vines. It's really upset because it was in my sunroom, which reaches the 40s at night during most of the winter, so you see a little bit of browning, but nonetheless, it has stayed alive. And this vine, you will actually break off the nodes and plant that directly into ground. 
this is what the slips are. And if you're curious on how to root a sweet potato, I will place a link in the video description that will teach you everything you know about how to root a sweet potato and plant the slips. Veggies 10 through 13 that you can plant in March are your nightshades, and that includes tomatoes, peppers, eggplant, and tomatillos. Now, if you're in the coastal south or the deep south like me, it's getting kind of too late to start starting things like tomatoes specifically because they don't do well when it starts getting regularly above 90 degrees during the day and 70 degrees during the night. So you better hurry up and get those seeds started if you live in a hot, humid climate like I do. But if you live well north of me or, or if you're inland in the Midwest or in the upper Midwest or on the West Coast where you don't get those persistent 90 degree temperatures, now is generally when you want to start your nightshades. Now, as I mentioned in the cucurbit segment, your nightshades tend to take a long time to germinate and grow into transplants. Generally speaking, they take up to about two weeks to germinate when you use a seedling heat mat. That will help make things faster and maximize your germination rate. But once they germinate, they usually take about another six weeks or so before they get large enough to be a full-size transplant to go out into your garden. So generally speaking, if you can't plant your tomatoes, peppers, and other nightshades out into your garden until April 15th or later, you probably want to start all of them around March 1st. If you can't plant them out into your garden well into May, you'll probably want to start them in mid to late March. After eight weeks, you will wind up with a transplant similar to this. This is a dwarf emerald giant dwarf tomato, and it's eight weeks old, and it just looks absolutely gorgeous. Look at those perfect roots. I'm probably going to plant this out into my garden this very weekend, and then run a little frost protection experiment. Let's see if I can get this to survive and then have really early fruit in my garden. Veggies 14, 15, and 16 are root vegetables, carrots, beets, and radishes. Now these are all frost tolerant vegetables that you can plant out into your garden while it's still cold out and you're getting temperatures below freezing. But because they are root vegetables, they do not like being transplanted. You only want to sow these directly into your garden. Now here in this raised garden bed, you can see a few waves of radishes and carrots. These are radishes that I sowed well over a month ago. This is a more recent planting of radishes that are just starting to get going. And then over here, we have lots of carrots. And here in North Carolina, I have the luxury of being able to sow these direct sow frost tolerant veggies all winter long, but some of you will have to wait until the soil warms up adequately to be able to sow these seeds. Now, as you can see, I have some fairly lousy carrot germination rates, and that's because I planted these in January when the soil temps were maximum coldness, so I did not get the best germination rates. However, I wanted to have an early crop, so this is just the price you pay to get going early in my climate. However, I'm going to now sow another crop of carrots and radishes because I'm going to get better germination rates in the warmer soil. This will be my early crop of carrots and radishes, and then I will have a follow-up crop for later. Over here, you can see a planting of beets that I actually planted at the tail end of fall. The beets are actually in the front. The monster stuff is charred in the back. Chard is more cold tolerant than beets. That's why it's grown so much larger than the beets and the beets have stayed small. Beets kind of grow slow as molasses in the middle of the winter with the weak sunlight. And I was able to keep the beets protected under a frost cloth all winter long and they look great. So because I was able to keep them alive all winter, these are going to be my early beets that I'm going to probably be able to harvest at some point in April because the more intense sun, they're going to really fire off and get going in the stronger sun. Then I'm going to plant another crop in about a week. That way I will have a staggered harvest when my April beets are all done. I will be able to harvest the other crop all the way through May, maybe even June if we don't have a really hot spring. Veggie 17 are peas, and that includes shelling peas, snow peas, and snap peas. Now, peas are best grown directly into the soil, not as transplants. So because of that, you need to wait until the soil temperatures become warm enough for the peas to germinate. Furthermore, pea plants are fairly cold tolerant. They can take a light to moderate frost, 
but the pods and the flowers cannot. They are actually quite sensitive to hard freezes. So I have to wait to sow my peas until all chances of hard freezes are pretty much over. So that means I really have to wait until March. Our last frost date is somewhere around April 1st, give or take a week on each side of the season, depending on the spring we are going to have. So that usually has me sowing my peas somewhere around the first or second week of March. That way they don't germinate and break ground until about the last week of March. The little tiny plants can tolerate a light frost. If we get a late frost, no big deal, but then they'll get going and grow nice and big and tall and strong in the warmth of April. Now, the reason why you want to get your peas into the ground while it's still cool out is because peas don't tolerate very hot temperatures above 80 degrees very well, let alone 90 degrees or more. They get stringy, they're not tender, they're just not good. So it's very important for me that I get my pea harvest in, in May before it gets really hot. You definitely want them to be mature and picked before the hot weather of the summer comes. Veggies 18 and 19 that you can plant in March are onion sets and shallot sets. Now, unfortunately, if you want to grow onions and shallots from seed, it is probably too late for you. Onion seeds take a long time to germinate and turn into adequately sized transplants, and onions and shallots bulb based on the day length. They have to be mature enough that they start developing bulbs in June and July when the day length is really long or else you won't get nice big bulbs. So if you want to start seed, I'm sorry to say it's probably too late. I started my onion and shallot seeds all the way back in the beginning of January, but it is not too late to plant sets. So if you go to a seed store, a lot of times you can find a big scooper and buy onion and shallot sets by the pound and they look something like this. Now what an onion or shallot set is, is a seed grown onion or shallot that they grew and then they started growing and then once they began to bulb, they ripped them out, they cut the green tops off and then they stuck them in a cool, dry, dark place and they went into dormancy and then you buy the started onion or shallot and you plant it directly into the ground and they will, generally speaking, pick up where they left off. So it is a more expensive way to do things, but if you're too late into the season, it's really the only way. So while I do like growing onions and shallots from seed, and I think that I often get better production like that, this is a good way to hedge your bets. So I really like planting them both ways because you never quite know what kind of year you're going to have. Veggies 20, 21, and 22 that you can plant in March are leeks, bunching onions, and romaine lettuce. Now, it may seem weird that I clustered these three things together, but that is because they are all the exception to the proverbial rule. Let me explain. Leeks are an allium, so they're in the same family as onions and garlic. However, leeks you do not harvest for the bulb, so it doesn't matter what time of year you plant them. They're also very cold hardy and very heat tolerant. Believe it or not, all of the leeks in this bed are about 10 months old. I planted them last spring along determinate tomato plants that were in this bed, and all of the leeks are just sitting here, hanging out, just happy as a clam, like in a giant refrigerator, waiting for a leisurely harvest whenever I want. So for that reason, I like having leeks in all different stages of development in my garden at all times. These leeks were planted many months after the leeks I just showed you, so once I harvest all the leeks in those beds, these leeks will be taken over and ready to harvest. So it's about time I start some more leeks from seed. We follow the same technique when growing bunching onions. Now bunching onions we do not harvest for the bulb, so we can plant them at any time of the year. Instead we harvest these as green onions or spring onions. We just bring out a pair of scissors or we snap them off as we need them for our dishes. Now, because you can harvest these whenever you want, I can leave them in my garden year round and keep cutting them down. And then when the plants start getting tired and woody, you just replace them with new seedlings. These are left over from last year and I just had them underneath this frost fabric in this little hoop structure I made. They survived two nights at 17 and 19 degrees back to back no problem at all, no damage. Most people, at least down to zone seven, can grow these all winter long. Then we have our romaine lettuce. Well, romaine isn't like most lettuces. Most lettuces are quite cold hardy, like this new red fire variety of lettuce that you see right here. This has been out in my garden all winter long with nothing more than this little agricultural fabric to protect it. 
multiple nights in the teens, no problem at all, no damage to the lettuce. However, romaine lettuce is not cold tolerant. It doesn't like frost or freeze. It is a warm weather lettuce. So I can't plant romaine like I do all of my other cold tolerant lettuces. My romaine is actually indoors on a seedling heat mat underneath grow lights germinating. They like warmer temperatures and I don't plant them out into my yard until March when things get warm enough and the frost and the freezes stop. In fact, this head of romaine lettuce right here is the only head that survived in my garden all winter long, and it only survived because I covered it with a milk jug and then again with frost fabric over these hoops when it got cold. So with double protection, it still looks terrible. It is all burnt back and pretty much dying in here. So don't think that just because romaine is a lettuce that it likes frost and freeze. It can tolerate a very light frost, but it doesn't do well, and it may take damage even then. So because of that, it's very important that you treat your romaine lettuce like a spring and summer vegetable and actually start the seeds indoors and transplant them out into your garden once it's nice and warm. But once it starts getting above 85 degrees during the day, make sure you cover it with shade cloth. 40% shade cloth is perfect, otherwise it could bolt or become bitter. And veggies 23, 24, and 25 are basil, parsley, and cilantro, also known as coriander. And while you can start all of these things in March, you need to treat them very differently. Basil, of course, is very sensitive to frost and freeze. You need to start these from transplant indoors and don't bring them out into your garden until it is sufficiently warmed up and there is no more chance of frost and freeze. Once you transplant them out, they will start growing very quickly. Now, basil germinates pretty quickly, especially on a seedling heat mat with a soil temperature of about 80 degrees. You'll probably get germination in only about three to five days. Then they will probably be ready to be transplanted out into your garden about a month later. Cilantro and parsley are both tolerant of cold temperatures. I've had my cilantro survive below 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Same thing with the parsley, but they are both sensitive to heat. Cilantro, also known as coriander, is one of the most heat sensitive things I have ever seen and I have ever grown. It bolts as soon as temperatures regularly get above 70 degrees. So if you want to grow cilantro in your garden, the window is very narrow. I recommend that you direct sow it. It will germinate quickly and then you're going to have that narrow harvest window. Now these are younger plants that I sowed directly that are just taking off. These are older plants from fall that are actually already bolting on me because they've reached maturity. So pretty soon, these are going to be toast and the younger plants are going to start taking over. While parsley is very cold tolerant, it does not like the cold to the same level as cilantro. Whereas you saw my cilantro plants growing like weeds all throughout the cool weather, the parsley kind of holds still. These are parsley plants that I direct sowed into my garden about two months ago and they've hardly grown at all. This is one that I started indoors as a transplant and I direct planted out, but it hasn't grown much. Parsley is slower to bolt, but it still will bolt when it gets very high hot out. So once temperatures regularly eclipse 80 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit, if you cover it with 40% shade cloth, or if you grow it as a potted plant and then move it into total shade, it will do a lot better and it may make it through the summer. And that right there are 25 veggies that you can sow right now in March. So everybody, I sure hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and please ring that notification bell so you're notified when I release more videos like these. If you have any questions about any of the crops that I featured in this video, please ask them down in the comments below. I will do my best to answer them. If you're curious about any of the products that I use in real life in my garden, they are all linked down below in my Amazon storefront in the video description. So expand the video description, click on the Amazon link and you'll see everything I use in real life. And while you're down there, check out my spread shop for custom merch if you wanna support the channel. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see all of you again on the next video. That yak chew looks so good. Can I have a bite? <laughs> Are you trying to sweet talk me away from taking your chew? Bite him, Daly, bite him. <laughs> he won't. He's so much sweeter than me. He's such a good boy. Here, I'll hold your chew, buddy. Come on. Come on, don't be a pickle. <laughs> <laughs> he oh. knows we're filming. He won't do anything on that camera. <laughs> He's protesting. All right, we'll turn off the camera and let you get back to your chew. Come on, come on, get it, get it. Yeah, there you go. Good boy.